Good afternoon, mathematicians. This is a review of the quiz from April 27. All right, let's review functions. Um, and this, in this, in this quiz, we're thinking about how functions are shifted, and especially how the quadratic functions are shifted. But I feel through a couple questions in here that are just general to functions. Okay, we've been working on a few function families. Um, quadratics is the newest one. Um, I recommend that as you go through this movie, you you rewind, pause, think about it, and really look at the options here. Look at the drawings and illustrations I'm making, and analyze them. Just let your brain kind of take it in. Okay, and um, and if you have to watch it more than once, that's okay. Try to pick up something new each time. Okay, be wise and become more intelligent, because your intelligence is not fixed. So, um, functions. We have an input and output machine here, okay? And um, you put a value in for x, left and right, and so you go maybe go two to the right from the center of the graph, right? And then it, for this machine, which is a quadratic, it's a squaring function. And you kind of have to know that. That's a squaring function. That's what quadratic is. In fact, quad, quadratic is uh, from a Latin word that means square or four-sided, quadratic. Um, so all quadratics have a little two as an exponent somewhere in the problem. And remember, a function has to have an x and y value because you have x inputs and y outputs. So usually they're written you know, in this form, y equals x squared. Okay, that's the parent function. It's the most basic quadratic that you can have. However, the if you're going to shift the quadratic left, right, up, or down, you usually will see it in this form, x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so this is the form that we're really trying to work with because that h is a left or right shift. Okay, and the k is an up or down shift, and so h k um, ends up being the vertex of the parabola, which is the kind of the bottom where it turns. Okay. So I just kind of gave you a huge clue as, as to what the answer is for this first question. Did you hear the word I said that would connect um, quadratic with a graph below? I said parabola. Okay, which, one's a, which one of these is a parabola? Okay, well, a parabola is a curve, and so graph 3 is out. Okay because that's not a curve. Um, and that's one we haven't looked at a whole lot. It's called absolute value. I've mentioned it, but we've worked with the others more. Um, the, the, the one, the one that these three are curved, but one is, is starts out kind of flat and goes really steep on one side. This other one here is, um, starts at a specific point and only goes to the right. And, and then this one here is very symmetrical and has a curve with kind of a, a middle point um, where the curve turns. Okay, it's called a vertex. So which is the quadratic? Which is a parabola? Okay, well, it's this one here. Okay, that's the parabola. All right, so the qu correct answer to this question is, um, is, is that. Now, think about this for a second. Just kind of analyze it here. Um, think about the parent function. That would be uh, starting in the middle and going up on both sides. Okay, why does it go up on both sides? Because if you square a negative, the output is still positive, like negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So go over 2, up 4, um, just like if I put in a regular 2 and go over 2, up 4 as well. And so it's, it's um, symmetrical because the negatives are canceled by the square. And so the left and right sides of a quadratic are always the same. That's why they have this nice parabola shape um, and always symmetrical with a line, kind of, um, with a, a line that can divide them exactly in half. Now this one also is symmetrical, but it's not a curved shape. Um, so the two sides are very linear. Um, so this is an absolute value graph down here. It doesn't really apply. Now explain my thinking here. I, I say that it's an upside down parabola. Um, true. And um, in order to make a parabola upside down, you have to put a, a letter out in front that's negative. So if you, um, if you did y equals negative, um, you know, something, 
Um, in this case, uh, it's um, it, it is just a regular sh shaped quadratic, so it's not made thinner or wider. Um, so it's negative on the outside, and it's not shifted left or right, so there's no h. So it's just x squared, but it is shifted up two. No, sorry, three. That's that's level of three, um, because each box is two. If that's ten up there. So it's shifted up three, okay? So if you're not understanding what I just said to write this equation, you need to pause or go back and just take a look at what's happening with this specific equation. Um, notice, though, it's still a quadratic because it has a squared term, so it's still going to be a parabola. And um, it's a frowny face because of this negative out front, so a negative coefficient reflects the graph down. Um, in kind of a mirror, like a, like in a, the reflection of a lake or something. Okay, so that's what makes it a frowny face here. Is, and and so let's get on to question two here. Okay, so which graph shows an exponential function? Okay, well that's a different function family. So instead of instead of um, having a x squared term in here, we have an x as the exponent. Instead of a 2 as an exponent, we have an x as an exponent. So let me just pick a, a different color ink. Let's go with red. So I have a number, and the, the x is the exponent this time. See, with over here with the quadratics, it was, it was a, a 2 for an exponent, and this is an x for an exponent. So what happens with these? Um, well, it, first of all, it does have a different shape. This whole family of squared of exponential functions has a different shape. And um, so what, what shape does it have? Well, this is the exponential function shape, okay? Because we already know that this is a quadratic, so you could cross that one out, okay? Um, this, one, this one goes to the right, and that's because uh, a square root can't be negative, so it always goes to the right here. Okay, and we've already talked about this as being absolute value. So it's this this one here, but let's uh, let's plug a value in. Like if I if I thought about that point right there, okay, um, um, uh, think about putting a positive number in here, like maybe a positive um, six or something. Um, if I put in a positive six here, it's two to the sixth power. Okay, so two to the sixth power is two times two times two times two times two times two, um, six times. So um, this is this is shifted over though. So it, it does have a shift going on in in the um, in the problem. But the the point of this problem is just to recognize what function family it comes from. Okay, and so this is the exponential function family. Okay, so. Um, explain my thinking. Exponentials are not exponent -ials. So what's wrong with that word? Exponentials. I guess I didn't like this. Uh, functions are um, one-sided and that they stay flat on one side and shoot up, up or down quickly on the other side. So they shoot up so quickly because when you put in a number for x as an exponent, so if I have a big number for x, it means the number, the base number, which here is two, is multiplied that many times by itself. And so that can increase the output value very, very quickly. And that's why the function gets really, really steep all of a sudden. Um, the only other function that gets steep is, is the, the parabola. It gets kind of steep. This one goes up at the same rate. It doesn't get steeper and steeper, whereas the parabola does get steeper and steeper, and so does the exponential graph. Now this um, square root graph, it doesn't really get steeper and steeper. It just kind of, kind of starts to level just a little bit. It never really gets to level, but it starts to level. Um, so that's because the outputs for the area of a square, um, if you were to think of the side length, 
the outputs are always going to be smaller than the area of the square. So that one does kind of level. All right, so that's exponential functions. It shoots up on one side. Okay, a square root function. Um, as we mentioned before, a uh, square root function cannot be negative. Um, the reason why it can't be negative is because the square root asks, given the area of a square, what's the side length? And um, you can't have a negative area for a square, or else it'd be kind of imploded upon itself and not, you know, you couldn't draw a, a negative area. Um, so it shoots off to the right only on one side because you can't have negative input values. All right, so the numbers going into the machine have to be positive. Okay, but it is um, it is a different function here. It's a square root function. So root x is the parent function. And then this function here has to be happens to be moved over two. Okay, move over two to the right. So there's a um, it's it is a square root, but it would be moved two, sorry, to the left, two to the left. And that's a plus two because it goes the opposite direction. You'd think it would for left and right function shift. Okay, so now we get to the graphs in which we um, actually have to write an equation that matches the graph, okay? So it, it's the vertex where the graph um, turns down here at the bottom that really gives us some information about where it it is shifted from. So think about if the vertex was at zero, zero, that would be like the, the parent function, kind of in, in standard position. But this is shifted over two and down one, and you can see that the numbers here, two, that's x value, so over two, and that's a height, the negative one, so down one. And that, uh, that's the form of the equation that we write, is x minus something, and then all of that squared Remember, see over here, x minus something, and that h is the left-right shift. So that's 2 is the h. So you could put a 2 there. And then um, this is the vertical shift, the negative 1 here. So that, that is shown here, the vertex of the negative 1. Okay? So, um, so this is how you write the equation, the negative 2 as the left-right shift. And and the negative one as the vertical shift, shifted down one, okay? Now, is it the, is it the normal width of the curve? Is it squashed or is it stretched? Um, if you go over one and up one, we get to the graph, and so we know it's just the normal width of the curve, okay? It's the next graph that is not a normal width that challenges us a little bit as far as um, uh, changing a, a coefficient out front here, okay? So this does again tell us this h, k, if it shifted left, right, up or down, and this says it shifted up two, it's a height of two, but it's not shifted left or right. So you don't see, like in our, in our function over here, okay, you don't see the, um, the h value. I don't have to write it in, it's, it's, it's missing. It's just an x in there. And the reason why I don't have to write that in is because if it's not shifted left or right, you can write that in as a zero and you don't have to write a minus zero. So you could write an x minus zero there, it just wouldn't be very efficient if it doesn't really change anything to write it. Um, so we just have an x there, so it's not shifted left or right, but it is shifted up two. So that is a vertical shift of two. Now we notice that it was is slimmer. Okay, so if I go over one and go down one, I don't get to the graph. So that'd be the normal curve without a, without a coefficient is over one, down one. But if I go over one, I can go down four. Okay, go down four. So there's a four out front. So it makes the outputs four times bigger. Rather than over one, down one, it is over one, down four. Um, and the, the down four does make it, a, make it a, um, a frowny face rather than a smiley face. So that's why we have this, this negative four out front makes it skinnier than your parent function. Okay, so that's our review for the quiz, and um, I hope that helps. Please remember, you know, ri rewind this and pause in places to really think about it and analyze. Let your brain kind of take in some of the information and really try to understand it and ask yourself questions, and, um, and, and you'll be more ready for the quiz and more intelligent about quadratics.
All right, that's it.